Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Right Now Word. We're so glad that you guys have taken time to tune in with us on tonight. We're so grateful that you have decided that you was going to um, be with us um, to hear The Right Now Word. We have a good show for you guys on tonight, and we're excited to bring you what God wants us to bring you. We just have a, a humble word to bring before all of you on tonight. A very humble word is it's a word um, for a call, a word, a word for a call, C-A-L-L, -L, to call us into um, remembrance, to call us into an, an awareness of what's happening around us. Before we get into that, um, I want to go over some of the products that we have. But before I get into the products, I want to talk to you guys about our intervention day. We're so excited at Excuse me. We're so excited about Intervention Day. And the last we spoke, I told you that it would be a full DuPont Park, but we've moved it to Parkland Park, which is right between Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue and uh, Malcolm X Avenue. So we're excited to bring you the Intervention Day. We're excited. So for more information about the Intervention Day, please contact us at 240-677-63214. Or email us at survivorsgm at gmail.com. Amen. So... We also want to talk to you guys about some of our products that we have. The first one we want to talk to you guys is about the anointing oil. And with this particular anointing oil, it says Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manners of sickness and disease. We want to give you this anointing oil. We want to give it to you. We want to give it to you for free. We want to give you this anointing oil for free. I mean, I think we went down to a dollar in the last month. But today, today, February the 20th, we want to offer it to you. Only for this, only for those who are looking at this show on tonight. You have to put um give a code of A plus plus. That's the code. If you are watching this show on tonight, you can get this bottle of anointing oil for free. The Matthew 10 1 oil. For giving us a call at 240-676-3214. Or email us at survivorsgm at gmail.com. Amen. So we're excited. Then we have, um, I want to talk to you guys about the intervention t-shirt. On our intervention day, we're asking everyone to wear their intervention t-shirts. This intervention t-shirt can help save someone's life. On the front, as you can see, it says, because you are not a mistake. And then on the back, it talks about the suicide prevention. It has the suicide prevention phone number, and as well as it says, one life at a time. To let, we're going to have these t-shirts on to let the people know that we're out here, that we care, that we're here to help. And that your life is important. It doesn't matter what geographical location that you're in. You know, I thought about how when we were at the Fort DuPont Park and I said, wow, Lord, we're going to Parkland now. And um, God said, I'm sending you where the greater need is. Amen. And so a lot of times um, people in that area are greatly forsaken. And God said he had to remind me, and I'm going to get into the word, how Jesus walked among the lowly and the ones and in the places where there was a greater need. Amen. And so a lot of times we want to um, we want to do ministry, but we want to do ministry comfort comfortably. And God is saying, no, I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. I'm taking you back to the places where you even grew up in. And I snatched you out of. And so a lot of times um, I'm reminded of the scripture where Jesus said to Peter. He said, Peter, after you have been converted. He says, strengthen. After, I have, after you have been converted, then you go back and you strengthen your brethren. And so that's what we have to do as Christians. We can't forget where God has snatched us out of, where God has brought us from. Uh, we want to get cleaned up and everything and then go to the places where we want to go. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. I'm sending you to the greater, the place where there's the greater need. Amen. And so in that community, Parkland, is such a great need. And so I'm asking all of you guys, those who are listening, those who who follow us on, um, on um, Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, that you will um, look at the time that we're going to be out there. Look at the day, um, Saturday, June 2nd, 2018. We're going to be in Parkland Park in Southeast Washington, D.C., right between Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X Boulevard or Parkway. Amen. So we're excited about it. We're about to make history. Amen. We're about to make history in between two historians, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Two great men, 
Amen. So we thank God for <clears throat> the history that we're going to make because people don't go in that location. So this will let the enemy know that we're taking back that territory in the name of Jesus. You can't have these people. They belong to God. And so we're going and we're going to have a stage. We're going to have speakers. We're going to have um, the glucose and the blood pressure and cholesterol checks, trucks out. We're going to have food. And we thank God for our two sponsors so far. And we thank God that we're going to get more sponsors. And so to sponsor, you can call us at 240-677-63214. Or you can email us at survivorsgm at gmail.com. We would be so very happy that you will come along and help us in this great um, endeavor. This is history being made that no one ever goes to this park. You know, a lot of people would say, oh, you having it at that park? Why? I said, because that's where the greater need is. The greater need is for that area. The greater need is for those people. Everything that Survivors Global Ministry Organization stand for is right there in that park. We help the underprivileged. We help the poor. We help the homeless. We help abused women and children. Amen? So that's what we do. We help people who need help. And our, um, one of our logo is each one reach one. So we're there to, each one of us, to reach. If we just reach one, we've done what God wanted us to do. Amen. Because just one being saved, the angels in heaven are glorifying God. They're having a party in heaven when one person gets saved. So we're excited about this endeavor. This is our first time going out as a team. And we know that God is going to get the glory. And so we, we don't, don't go in our own motives. We go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Letting these people know that we know you've been forsaken. We know that you've been looked down on. But <laughs> hallelujah. But there's a bomb in Gilead to heal your soul. And his name is Jesus. The same Jesus that was looked on. What people said, are you kidding me? He's just a carpenter's son. Are you kidding me? Isn't that Mary's son and Joseph's son just a carpenter? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I come to tell you the devil is a liar. Something good can come out of Southeast Washington, D.C. Something good can come out of Parkland Park area. Something good could come out of Ward 8, Ward 7, Ward 6. Something good could come out of Southeast. And so we're coming to bring you the, something good, which is Jesus Christ, which is the gospel, to let you know that he can snatch you out of the muck and the mire. Come and help us. Help us. Help us win souls for Christ. Help us counsel people. Help us love on people. Help us let them know that God has not forgotten about them. And that although people um, have made them statistics, that they're not a statistic in God's eyes. That they are love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. So we thank God that we got the whole entire park to do what we want to do with it. From 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., although we may not be out there that long, but we had the whole entire day. So guess what? We need dancers. We need singers. We need um, community leaders. We need people who are going to speak. Who are going to speak, and it's not just, um, you know, it don't have to just be gospel. They can speak motivational, encouraging words. I mean, so we're looking for all talents. Amen. Just to let the people know that you've been forsaken for too long, but this is your time, Parkland. You know, this is your time to rise up. This is your time in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy thought that what he did in Parkland, Florida was going to stop Parkland, Southeast Washington, D.C. But the devil is a liar. We should not be, be um, shaken. We should not be moved. For God is with us. He will uphold us with his right hand. Hallelujah. Somebody hear me and hear me clearly. You don't have to run and be scared of the tactics of the enemy. The devil is a liar. He's a defeated foe. God will uphold us with his right hand. He is with us. And we should go forth to preach the unadulterated word of God. We should go forth and tell the people, you're, you don't have to live like this. We're snatching you out of the fire. Hallelujah, we're snatching you out of the muck and the mire. You're coming out of that drug house. Hallelujah. You're coming out of that alcoholism. You're coming out of it in the name of Jesus. You're coming out of this poverty. You're going to be raised up out of these, out of the Southeast Washington um, hood, ghetto. Because God got a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. And he wants to pick you up. 
He wants to turn you around. He wants to place your feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just because you live in that type of environment, it doesn't define you. Your present state does not define you. Only God can define you. Man cannot define you. Only God has defined you. He has already written your life out. God has already written your life out. God already know what he has purpose and plan for you to do in the earthly realm. So don't get distracted or disappointed about where you are or where, what, is, what is your current circumstance or what is your present circumstance. Because I know a God who knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. My Bible says that he's Alpha and he's the Omega. My Bible says that he is the beginning and he is the end. My Bible says that he is the first and he is the last. And my Bible says that he is the author. And guess what, my friends? He is the finisher of not just my faith, but of your faith, of our faith. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about what God is going to do on Intervention Day. I don't get discouraged. I don't get disengaged. When, when things change, I say, God, you know what's going on. But it's so funny because in that same week, and it's not really funny in that sense, in that same week on that Monday before Valentine's Day, God told me that, that the enemy was going to send the snake. The snake to kill, steal, and to destroy. And I spoke to my radio audience on that Monday about it. And um, then I heard the Lord say, Parkland, Parkland. But earlier in that day, that's when the lady had told me she was changing a park for me. To park, well, she asked me. She didn't tell me. She said, would you go to Parkland? And I said, yes, I will. Because I've been hearing Parkland all in my spirit. And God was telling me that something was about to happen. Amen. But when she said Parkland, I got a little distracted. I said, well, maybe he's talking about Parkland Park. That's because the lady just, you know, asked me about going to Parkland Park. But how many of you know that God will tell his prophets? God doesn't do anything. Nothing happens without the prophets knowing. The Bible says God doesn't do anything except he tells his prophets. So the prophets are aware. Amen of what's going on, but we have to be more engaged so we can pinpoint it in accuracy. Amen, glory to God. Because he spoke Parkland in my spirit, and guess where the shooting happened on that Wednesday on Love Day? I'm not surprised about the shooting happening in Parkland, Florida, because I heard Parkland. Amen, glory to God. And that made me even the more confident. And it was confirmation that, yes, Parkland Park was where we supposed to have intervention day. Because there's a people that's dealing with mental illness. There's a people that are downtrodden in that area. And God said, I'm raising up my people because I got some prophets in that area. I got some evangelists, some pastors, and some apostles in that area. And they don't even realize who they are. And it's your job to put your team together and, and reveal to them what their identity is. We're walking around. We got people walking around and don't know their identity. I spoke about this a few weeks ago when, when I did when you, when you I did the show, when I taped the show, about knowing your identity. And God wants us to help people know what their identity is because the enemy has stolen so much from the people of God to the point where he has taken away, stripped us of who we, who, who we really were in God. But God is sending us to go back into those neighborhoods, to go back in those areas, to remind the people of who they are, who God says they are. He says that they are a royal priesthood. He says that they are a chosen generation. He says that they are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. Yes! He has a promise for you. He has a purpose for you. I don't care what the devil has whispered in your ear. I don't care what people are saying about you. I don't care what your current condition is. All I know is, it's covered by the blood. Your past, your present, and your future is covered by the blood. Hallelujah. So we're excited. And I want you guys to invest in some of these books. And I'm going to briefly go through the books. The first book is Misguided Affections. The second book is When a Prophet Cries, Something Happens. The third book is I Give You Keys. You can get all three of these books by going to Amazon.com, Zulonpress.com, BarnesandNobles.com, or Apple, 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 Apple So you can get all three of these books 
I give you keys, misguided affections, and when a prophet cries, something happens. Amen. And so, um, I want to get back to my message. And it simply is mental health undiagnosed. Mental health in the church undiagnosed. I want to talk about the, the crisis that happened in Florida. And I want us to be in prayer for that family. But I also not mainly talking about the crisis, but I want to talk about how the enemy is out like never before. And that how a lot of us have mistaken this thing. And it's instead of putting blame on flesh, we got to understand that this is a spiritual battle. And a lot of and, and the talk has been, you know, mental illness doesn't make people act out, mental illness doesn't make people kill. But 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 let me correct you. Mental, there are different types of mental illnesses. There are over 200 types of, over 200 types of mental illnesses out here. There are over 200 types, amen, and they affect people in different ways. A lot of times people will ask their prophetess, um, is, is mental illness a spiritual or is it a natural? So it's both. I come to tell you that it's both. And I'm explaining to you why it's both. Why is a uh, mental illness and is a demon? But first, let me talk about to, about mental illness in the natural. In the natural sense, a mental illness and a mental disorder is simply a brain disease, a brain disorder. You got chemical imbalances, and the person has chemical imbalances in their brain, just like a person who's a diabetic. They got issues with their pancreas, just like a person who has heart disease or heart problems. They got issues with their heart. Uh, mental health, mental illnesses are the same way. Some type of of, 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 of of chemical imbalance is going on in their brain and some mental illnesses situations whereas um, they're not getting enough air or enough um, 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 chemical or there's some type of imbalance they're not neutrons are not formed or going in the right direction and it's causing them to either be depressed it's causing them even to have personality disorders it's causing them to have mood swings and things of that nature and so mental illness is very very real amen and so how the mental illnesses um, affect dif affect people is different Amen. And so you have some of them. Let me just tell you that there's over 60 million people in them in the United States, not in the world, but in the United States alone who suffer some type of mental illness. There's over 60 million people in the United States, over a, a great percentage of people in the United States suffer mental illness more than they do diabetes, more than they do HIV AIDS, more than they do cancer. So I want to ask you. What is the church doing in these last days? Undiagnosed. We have people right in our church who are dealing with mental illness. We have people right in our church who are dealing with these issues. It's time for the church to rise up and, 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 and go out and, and, and help these people. A lot of times we are depending on the government. I hear us depending too much on the government and God says stop it. It's time for us to be accountable as the church, as the body of Christ, to be accountable for some of these social um, issues that's going on. We want to quickly blame the government. We want to quickly point fingers at the government. And God is saying, no, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. What are you doing? So I come to you tonight to tell you that God told me to tell you to do what Jesus did. Jesus went. We got to come out of the four walls of our churches. They're not coming in. God told me to tell you we got to come out of the church. We got to go out into the places that nobody want to go. We got to go to the parkland parks. We got to go to the uttermost and guttermost parts of the world and spread the gospel. I heard somebody talking about gun violence and all of this shooting that's going on in Chicago, all this shooting that's going on. So what are we doing about it as a church? Because just like we have liquor stores on every corner, we have churches on every corner. Are those churches coming out and ministering to those people? Or are they stuck inside the four walls of their church? Shouting and dancing and splitting and spitting. Are they going out, talking to the drug dealer, talking to the drug users, letting them know, son, daughter, you don't have to live this way. So we got to do better as a body, as the body of Christ Jesus. He was in light because what he did, other people didn't like what he did. They thought that he was supposed to come um, haughty, but he came humble and he let them know. That I don't come for the saved, but I come for the unsaved. Amen. And so we have to do what he did. He said, I come for the world. I come for the lowly. I come for the brokenhearted. Those who are broken in spirit. Amen. And so he walked among those. He went into the place.
places where nobody thought he should go. That's why he was harshly criticized. Because they felt like if he was a representative of God, what in the world is he doing down by the whorehouse? What is he doing with the whoremongers? What is he doing walking with a, 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 an adulterer? An adulteress? But he knew what he was doing because he knew that these type of people, you can't just talk about it. They want to see demonstration. And in this hour, in this minute, in this second, in this, in this season, we are confronted with the people that you just can't tell them any old thing. You got to live by example. You got to be their example. You got to walk among them like Jesus did. Jesus said, if my people would only do what I did. He said, I came down here on earth, put myself in filthy flesh, allowed it to birth me out, to walk among you, to show you how to love, to show you how to forgive, to show you how to witness, to show you how to heal, amen, to show you how to cast out devils, but we're not doing it. So we got to go back to the basics. We got to go back and do what Jesus did and go back to mental health. We can help these people. So yes, it is a sickness, but it's also a demon. And so let me just talk a little bit about that. So I talked about what, a what and how mental illnesses occur. And as you know that we have bipolar, the prat, which is manic depression. We have people that um, suffer from schizophrenic, personality disorder, and they hear voices. <clears throat> we have people who deal with dementias. Um, anxieties, all of those things are mental illnesses. And there are several other, like I said, over 200. And a lot of times we have people right in our church who are dealing with it and don't even know it. That's why I titled this message, Undiagnosed. To bring you an awareness of maybe it's not a demon. Maybe, just maybe there's some type of mental illness. You've been trying and trying and trying and trying to get delivered from, you know, from, from hearing voices or maybe from the de depression and it's still not gone nowhere. It's okay. There's such a stigma in the church. The stigma is why you want to see a shrink. The stigma is you don't need to see a shrink. You don't need to see this person um, to the, the, the go get medicine. But I say that the devil is a liar because anybody that's studying spiritual warfare know that even to get a person to the point of renouncing a demonic um, um, infestation, that they first have to be come into an awareness. You got to get them to a place of point where they're at an awareness that they need to renounce it, that they have a, a clarity of mind that they can renounce it. Amen. And so sometimes that take medication for some people. Some people like schizophrenics and things of that nature. Amen. Even people that's dealing with bipolar. Amen. And so I just come to tell you what Jesus told me to tell you on tonight. Just a simple message. Do what Jesus did. And so we as a church got to, you know, accept what is going on. And then we have to deal with it instead of looking the other way. We can't afford in this season to look the other way. We can't afford to have another shooting. We can't afford, and, and the thing about it is we, we complain about what we need to do and for two weeks and then that's it until the next shooting come along. Then we put the blame on everybody except for tonight I'm dealing with the church because God distinctly told me that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. So I'm dealing with the church on tonight to let you know church. Will the real church of God please stand up? It's time for us to rise up and do what God told us to do. It's not about making your name great. It's about making his name great. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus because Jesus says that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Now the spiritual aspect of the mental illness is this. When a person is having um, mental illnesses that, that someone was born with and that's dealing with mental illness in the mind when you have chemical imbalances and things of that nature, it's easy for the, a demon to, to, to lodge itself in that type of mind. Remember, the battlefield is in the mind, okay? If you're sane and the devil come and talk to you and able to have you do things that's, not, that's contrary to the will of God, can you imagine how he's easily to use a person that's mentally ill, who's not in their right mind, especially if they're not on their medication. If you're not on your medication, you're prone to do anything. It's not the mental illness that causes them to act out. It's the demonic spirit that has lost itself in that person that says, I want you to kill. I want you to rape children. I want you to do these things. Amen. And so 
The mental illness is there, but it is gone unchecked, undiagnosed. It's there, but it was never dealt with, especially with people who don't get, who don't take their medication. If you're, some people with mental illnesses, when they do take their medications, yes, they stay to themselves. But if you haven't been taking your medication and the enemy jumping you in a demon, a demon of murder, a demon of, 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 of sex, a demon of violence jump in you. And tell, and you're, and you're hearing the voices, and it's telling you to go kill. You're gonna go kill. Number one, you already have a mental illness. Number two, that demon is way stronger than you because you have nothing to submit under. You don't have the, the word of God to submit under. You haven't submitted yourself to the word of God. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. If you have a mental illness and you have not submitted yourself unto God to even help you overcome, to give you strength to overcome the flesh, to overcome, you know, the, that, that mindset. Because the Bible says we got to regenerate our minds daily in the word of God. We have to renew our minds. Amen. And the Bible says to let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. So if you're not rehearsing and reading the Bible and you're dealing with a mental illness, yes, the devil going to have a field day in your head. The devil going to be telling you to do all kinds of things. Them demons going to be talking to you like mighty going north. If you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit and the enemy come and attack your mind, what makes you think he won't attack the mind of a mentally ill person? Oh, he loves mentally ill people. That's his playground. He used them like never before. So let me just dismiss the notion that the person that, de that do these things are not mentally ill. The devil is a liar. There's some mental illness. It may not be a, a drastic mental illness, but there is some mental illness that, and yes, it is a demon too. It's both. It's both spiritual and it's natural. Amen? Because we're fighting in a spiritual battle. We're fighting a spiritual war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You wonder why there's um, murder all ravaging through the cities. Because there's a territorial spirit that has attached itself to that city. And that's why Jesus walked among the poor. He walked among the murderers. He walked among them because he knew that them demons was in those cities. He went to those, them, to those people who was dealing with um, madness. He took, he went to the man that was dealing in madness and he said, um, who are you? What's your name? And he told him, he said, my name is Legion. There's many of us. And so he, he cast those demons out of them. We can't be afraid to walk up to them and say, what's your name? And when they tell you, cast them out in the name of Jesus. But first you got to be able to get them to a place where they can say what they're going through. It's important that you cast out the right spirit. And that comes with training and learning deliverance ministry. I just simply come to tell you tonight that Jesus said, do what I did. There is too many, too much that the church is. We're pointing the fingers all of a sudden too much. We're pointing the fingers and we're looking for the government to do what God has made us to do, has told us to do. Jesus said, do what I did. You want to change the world? First, it starts with you. Amen. It starts with your awareness of what's going on. It starts with your awareness of making a difference. And you have to go outside the four walls of the church. Church, you have a youth ministry. You have a young adult ministry. You have a sick and shut in ministry. But where is your mental health, mental illness ministry? You want to get mad because people say, Maybe they have mental illness. It's real, my friends. We want to dismiss the notion. The problem is we're so spiritually minded and no earthly good and the devil is having a field day. Because if he can keep us that way, he don't know already. He feel like he has already won the world. And he's a liar because the battle has already been won. God is raising up his remnant. Will you stand up? Will you answer the call? Because there's a dying world out there. And they need our help. It's time for the undiagnosed to get diagnosed and we deal with the problem. Thanks for tuning in to The Right Now Word. Thank God you bless you the and right good night. Word. If you are listening and you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I submit to you that he loves you so much. He wants to come into your heart. 
He wants to change your life. If you will go to Romans 10 9, the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then my friend, you will be saved. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Right Now Word.